Thanks for joining us from the Ohio Agnet Voice You Know with the News You Trust studio, sponsored by Grain Equipment Company, where innovation meets execution. I'm Dale Menio. 45 degrees this morning, but maybe more importantly, 1.39 inches of rain in the last 24 hours. Ohio corn and soybean growers expecting lower yields in 2024 as a result of the abnormally dry summer. That according to Ben Torrance, state statistician USDA's NAS Ohio field office. The November crop production report is based on conditions as of November 1, 2024. Ohio corn production is forecast at 586 million bushels, down 13% from last year. A yield is forecast at 185 bushels per acre, down 13 bushels from last year, but up two bushels from last month. Ohio soybean production is expected to total 262 million bushels, down 5% from last year. The yield is forecast at 52 bushels per acre, down six bushels from last year, and unchanged from the previous forecast. By the way, powered by soy biodiesel, I'll be heading to the Ohio Soybean Association and Soybean Council office today and bring you an update from there. Nationally, corn production for grain is forecast at 15.1 billion bushels, down less than 1% from the previous forecast, and down 1% from last year. Based on conditions as of November 1, yields are expected to average nationally 183.1 bushels per harvested acre and down 7 tenths of a bushel from the previous forecast, but up 5.8 bushels from last year. Area harvested for grain is forecast at 82.7 million acres, unchanged from the previous forecast, but down 4% from the previous year. Record high yields are forecast in Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Louisiana, Michigan, Nebraska, South Dakota, and Wisconsin. In the soybeans nationally, U.S. soybeans are forecast at 4.46 billion bushels, down 3% from the previous forecast, but up 7% from 2023. Based on conditions as of November 1, yields are expected to average nationally 51.7 bushels per acre, down 1.4 bushels from the previous forecast, but up 1.1 bushels from a year ago. Area harvested for beans in the U.S. is forecast at 86.3 million acres, unchanged from the previous forecast, but up 5% from 23. Record high yields are forecast in Arkansas, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Mississippi, New York, and Texas. Today's weather brought to you by Seed Consultants. Simply better performance online at seedconsultants.com. Here's the forecast. We've got a dry start to the week here in Ohio. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ryan Martin. Let's take a look at that forecast update. We're looking at partly to mostly sunny skies for today and tomorrow. Wednesday will feature sunshine as well, but we are going to be seeing clouds increase in the afternoon. But the first half of your week is definitely dry beginning to end across the region. Our next frontal boundary comes through on Thursday. Likely brings us anywhere from a quarter to three quarters of an inch, ending up with 100% coverage of moisture. But I really think think that most of us are going to be half an inch or less. I'm not keen on a big thunderstorm potential. I'm also not keen on seeing a significant cool down afterwards. Yes, we're a little bit cooler, but that cold Canadian air outbreak still has yet to take root and take hold. I think we are dry for Thursday night. We are dry and mild for Friday and for Saturday. Going into Sunday, we see clouds increase, but our next round of moisture shows up likely early next week, Monday into Tuesday, with showers and maybe a few thunderstorms. Can see anywhere from a quarter to one inch of rain there. Behind that early week system next week, we may be able to see some cold air dive in, particularly looking at Tuesday night through Wednesday, but it's not a major shot of cold air. I think we actually are colder over the northern plains and into northern Kansas than we end up being out this direction. That's the way your forecast is stacking up. I'm meteorologist Ryan Martin. And thanks, Ryan. Joining me, David Marison, Field Specialist, Farm Management, OSU, and we're talking about planning for the future of your farm. How long has this conversation been going on from an education standpoint and OSU tied to it? Well, with OSU tied to it, we've been doing this workshop for over a decade. As a farm community, we have been talking about this since the beginning of time, though, about how do you transition that family business from one generation to the next and to do it successfully. Where do you break this out? This is all about Ohio. Pretty similar between all states 
States, across the United States when it comes to succession transition of your business to the next generation. But we try to customize it with the uniqueness of Ohio operations because we have great diversity, whether it's livestock or crop you mentioned, eastern Ohio versus western Ohio where the land values are done to southern Ohio. So we try to customize the program to fit the needs of Ohio producers. So when you say the program, but we've talked a little bit off the air, there are a number of different styles of program delivery. Tell us more about that. Traditionally, you know, Extension has been providing programs through in-person workshops. And this is no different. We have a six-hour. So this is not just your splash and dash type of workshop. You come in for an hour and leave. This is pretty intensive to really get your wheels turning to think about farm transition, estate planning. So it is a six-hour course. Traditionally hold those across the state. If we look at between November and next March, we have seven of these in-person workshops across the state. There are workshops available. Find out how you can participate in any of the three different styles coming up. You can go to go.osu.edu backslash farm succession. I've been visiting with David Marison, field specialist for farm management at OSU. Let's check in with Joe Everett now with some interesting data from USDA's recent census. In 2022, for only the second time, the Census of Agriculture collected information and data from farm producers who had served or who are currently serving in the U.S. Armed Forces. Results showed that there were over 305,000 farm producers, which is about 9% of the country's 3.3 million producers, had military service, covering over 108 million acres. Veterans typically transition naturally into farming, ranching, and other agricultural opportunities because of the sense of duty, responsibility, and accountability for completing a mission. This is why, according to the American Farm Bureau Federation, nearly a quarter of the veterans returning home will return to rural America, and that one in every six farms has a producer who is currently serving or who has served in the military. On this Veterans Day, we salute you veterans for your service to this country and the work you're doing in agriculture. I'm Joe Everett reporting. And thanks, Joe. Back with more after this. Since 1926, Nationwide has been rooted in agriculture. Founded as the Farm Bureau Mutual Automobile Insurance Company with a mission to protect farmers and their communities, we honor our legacy by offering solutions that evolve with the complex needs of today's farms. As the leading insurer of America's farms and trusted by eight farm bureaus for 100 years and counting, Nationwide is on your side. Number one insurer based on 2023 direct written premium per AM best. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and affiliates Columbus, Ohio. Soybeans grown in Ohio and across the heartland are meeting the feedstock demand for clean fuels. Biodiesel is a clean burning and reliable fuel that enhances engine life, power, and mileage. Plus, this high performance fuel works in any diesel engine without modification. With biodiesel, we fuel the economy, do good for the environment, and support soybean farmers. Learn how using biodiesel can add value to every bushel of soybeans grown at SoilOhio.org. Clean Fuels Alliance America commends the California Air Resources Board, or CARB for short, for passing the amendments to the state's low-carbon fuel standard, a move that marks another step forward in California's decarbonization leadership. Clean Fuels acknowledges CARB's continued commitment to a cleaner future while recognizing there is more work ahead to ensure crop-based renewable fuels are recognized as a long-term solution. Clean Fuels has enjoyed a long partnership with CARB and is committed to working with the staff to ensure that the updated regulations can meet California's aggressive carbon reduction targets while supporting the agricultural community that is the backbone of our sustainable clean fuels, said Corey Ann Wind, Director of State Regulatory Affairs at Clean Fuels Alliance America. Since the low-carbon fuel standard was adopted in 2009, California fleets have used increasing amounts of biomass-based diesel to lower emissions and lessen reliance on fossil fuels. Fifteen years later, 75% of the state's diesel pool is renewable and responsible for 45% of California's progress under the low-carbon fuel standard. The biodiesel and renewable diesel industries are creating jobs, improving air quality, and providing sustainable options for fleets to reduce their carbon footprint today and at lower cost than other options. Looking to the future, sustainable aviation fuel can do more 
of the same. In one of the sides of the World Ag Supply and Demand Report, we sometimes don't look at, but we're going to look at today, beef production for 2025 was increased by 355 million pounds as fed cattle slaughter is expected to increase by uh, 2025. Feedlot managers will be pleased to see that quarterly steer prices were increased from last month's projection as steer prices in the first quarter of 2024 are expected to average 188 $8 dollars a hundred weight up two dollars from last month beef imports for 2024 were increased by 125 million pounds as packers need more processing type of cuts but exports for 2024 also saw a slight increase of five million pounds in Friday's report, we also saw the hog and pork numbers. Pork production for 2024 was decreased by 90 million pounds as slaughter speeds and carcass weights are both lighter than originally assumed. And the trend continued into 2025 projections as pork production for 2025 was decreased by 115 million pounds. Thankfully, the industry did see some support in terms of quarterly prices. Time now for the Louis Dreyfus Grain Analysis brought to you by the Ohio Soybean Council and your soybean checkoff. Here's Ryan Martin. Grain markets had a rough finish to the week last Friday. Red on the screen everywhere. We're kicking off a new week, hoping for a little bit of a bounce back. But let's take a look at most of the reason behind last Friday's falling off. We had October's supply and demand report. It was just another in a string of very unexciting releases. Now, recall, I think I told you that was going to happen. I just didn't see much happening in this report, but let's talk about what did pop up. Adjustment to the U.S. and world supply and demand estimates largely matched expectations. The focus is returning now immediately to improving world weather forecasts and harvest pressure here in the United States. Late last week, U.S. models had an expansion of Brazilian rainfall in the 6- to 15-day period. Better rain chances also projected across eastern Ukraine and southern Russia here this week, at least today through a Thursday. And now the U.S. model is in better alignment with the European and other models in projected soaking rainfall across the plains in the later this week, early next week time frame. That's important for wheat, and so that is something that we really pay attention to. To the supply and demand report, corn yield was raised about two-tenths of a bushel to 183.8. Ending stocks cut 58 million bushels as lower carry-in supplies, which were known, and a 25 million bushel hike in projected exports was more than offset by the production increase. The notes that are additional yield are common in November when yield raised in both September and October, so we'll have to see what happens next month but again i'm not expecting a whole lot total 24 25 supply in argentina and brazil were increased to combine 3.6 million metric tons importantly the WASD trimmed the 24 25 chinese imports by 2 million metric tons following china's absence from the brazilian market in late summer and early August. Soy yield lowered gently, one-tenth of a bushel per the acre. Production was trimmed to 4 million bushels, ending stocks untouched. So that was the story of last Friday's report. I'm Ryan Martin. And thanks, Ryan. We'll look at the overnight figures after this. Whether you're in the fields or on the farm, creating a safer work environment has never been easier. BWC's safety consulting services are included with your policy premiums and offer training and education for everyone in your farming operation. It's always the right time to make safety a priority. Visit bwc.ohio.gov or call 1-800-644-6292. The Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation, here to help you work safely. Today's market's brought to you by Seed Consultants. Simply better performance online at seedconsultants.com. In the overnight, December corn up three quarters, 431 and three quarters. March up a quarter of a cent at 444 and a half. November beans up seven and three quarters, now at 1024 and a half. January's up nine at 1039 and one quarter. And if you held that crop all the way to March, you're at $10.52 up eight and a half. On the wheat, December 562 down 10 and a half. July new crop down eight and a half at 596 and a half a cent. 
In livestock, Friday's closes had December cattle at 183.70, down $2.12. February also down $2.12 at $185.30. December lean hogs, $80.42, down 77. February down 47 at 84.82. And January feeder cattle down $2.90 at 241.42. Thanks for joining us. This is the Ohio Agnet.